because he would tear all of this, all of this, lights, camera, everything would be destroyed. Welcome back to my channel. It's Love Always Endures. To those of you who are new, welcome. So today I wanted to kind of do a brief intro to share with you about the dog that we've all been waiting for. I got a puppy, y'all. It's been like three months ago at this point. This was supposed to be a one month update, so I apologize for the delay. But those of you who've ever had a puppy, in particular a large breed puppy, you know that things are crazy, crazy. First off, I want to share with you the breed of the dog because I did not discuss that with you before. And I want to go ahead and do a name reveal, okay? I want to drop his name because it's a strong, beautiful, powerful name for a big, beautiful dog, okay? So, drum roll, please. A few minutes later. Giant Schnauzer. That was corny. He's a giant schnauzer, okay? And um, the reason I chose that specific breed is because I wanted a large breed dog that was hypoallergenic. The most common breeds that have that particular trait that are large breed is gonna be your poodles, your schnauzers, and your Airedale terriers. So um, I went ahead and got a gorgeous black beauty, and his name is... Just kidding. This experience has been everything except for peaceful. Like it's literally, I feel like I, I spent the first first month exactly. You know what, I, I, I spent the first week exhausted, exhausted. And then it just turned into tired and now I'm just constantly tired. But I know that's part of the process. I know that you have to kind of get over the hump and that is where I am right now. I'm kind of on top of the hill. He's four months old, he's 40 pounds. He's an energetic dog, he's an energetic breed and he definitely be all over the place and he'd be a full handful. Which for those of you who are wondering, why don't I see him right here? Because he would tear all of this, all of this, lights, camera, everything would be destroyed if he was here right now everything it would just be just just go ahead and trash it like he would be chewing on cords chewing on everything behind the scenes it would not be cute so no he is not currently here he's actually at doggy daycare but i'm gonna put lots and lots of footage in this video so that you can see him and experience him and feel like you're getting to know him because i want you all to see him as he grows see me as i transition into dealing with a larger breed dealing with my first puppy etc i just wanted to share a couple of things that i have learned in this experience um, that i did not expect to learn number one i came to find that the planning that went into this paid off but it still wasn't enough planning there's really no way to prepare for the amount of planning that goes into a large breed puppy. There are just lots of unknowns, things that I did not expect. For instance, I dealt with a lot of puppy biting his first month of life. It was frustrating. It was annoying. It was saddening. Like, I couldn't walk through my house without high stepping like I'm walking on lava because he's nipping at my ankles and nipping at my shoes. I was tucking my shoelaces into my shoes. I wasn't wearing anything flowy, no skirts, no dresses. Like I had to be super mindful that anything that moves and flutters and flows catches his eye and he wants to put his teeth on it. Like literally put his teeth on it and his teeth are sharp and he's quick. And that was, that was definitely difficult for me in the beginning. I did not expect to deal with a dog that was biting me all the time. And he wasn't attacking me, he wasn't being vicious, he was just being playful, but it hurt. Like when I tell y'all he got me, he got that chunk of meat above your knee. You know what I mean? Like that's a pretty firm area. Like that is an area that he had to go in and grab my knee meat. Number two, I learned the importance of being the dominant figure for your dog. I already knew it was important. I thought that it was naturally gonna be established. I mean, after all, it's me and him, right? Obviously, I'm gonna have to be the dominant figure because I'm training him, I'm feeding him, I'm taking care of him. But it wasn't until he met my dad and I saw how he reacted with my dad that I learned that he was not seeing me as dominant. So I had to make a couple of changes. These dogs, particularly this breed, will size you up. It does not matter if they're eight weeks old or 18 weeks old. They will, from the gate, size you up and determine if you are an alpha or you are not. So you have to be 
and alpha. It doesn't mean I have to be stern and forceful. It doesn't mean I have to be spanking him and all kind of stuff. It just means that I have to establish those rules in a way that he understands. I have to make him sit for his meals. I have to pick up his bowl in the middle of eating sometimes to show him that I control his food, okay? I am his source for replenishment and that helps him to gain respect for me as his alpha. So that was something that I knew in theory that I had to do, but he's just so sweet and cute and cuddly and I just don't wanna ruffle his feathers and yeah, no, no, upset him a little bit. He needs to know that you're in charge. The importance of a good support system was key. Apollo had a lot of play dates with a lot of different friends over his first several weeks of life. Because he wasn't vaccinated for the first eight weeks that I had him, I set up play dates with my friends who have vaccinated socialized dogs and Apollo played his little heart out. He made so many friends, he played with dogs of all ages, dogs of all sizes, and he started learning social cues and stuff like that and how to interact with other dogs. Dogs will teach puppies things that humans just can't teach puppies because we speak different languages. I also learned that anything can go for a puppy. Just because they're well-behaved, well-mannered in one situation or that they listen well in one situation doesn't mean if you change the context that they'll also listen and understand and be well-mannered. I had an experience with Apollo in his very first puppy class. He started puppy class two weeks ago and can I just say the first week was a horrible experience. He barked the entire time. Apollo is not a very vocal dog. He's not really that yippy yappy dog that you expect a schnauzer to be. And he literally barked for an hour. I was frustrated. <sighs> what do you do? What do you say? You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't muzzle him, you know, I couldn't spank him into submission. I mean, we're in the middle of a puppy class. There's a teacher in the front of the room. There are classmates sitting around, you know what I mean? So that was definitely an interesting experience that I did not expect. So I learned to three, always be prepared. I now go into his puppy training class with extra treats, with toys. I go in with new toys, something that he's never ever seen before or something that he hasn't played with in a long time. That counts as a new toy for, for a puppy. Number four, take a deep breath and just relax. Just relax. Know that it's not gonna be perfect, it's not always gonna go your way, but allow yourself some time to protect your energy. So if that means taking a day where the puppy's out of the house because he's at daycare or he's playing, you know, he's with your parents or whatever, like give yourself that time and don't feel guilty. Don't feel like you're a bad mom or a bad dad because you're not trying to be around your puppy right now because taking that time for yourself gives you the energy to be the best pet parent that you can be. And especially when you're dealing with a puppy that does not have an off switch, like literally, unless he's in his kennel, he's always on the move. That sort of a thing can be very exhausting. So protect your energy. Five, a tired puppy is a calm puppy. I literally have learned that if Apollo goes to daycare, the very next day, like pretty much the entire next day, he's tired. And I don't mean he's lethargic and he doesn't do anything. I just mean that everything about him is toned down a little bit. And it's because he got a lot of physical and mental stimulation the day before. That was the best strategy that I ever could have had. If you can set aside a budget for your dog to go to daycare regularly, especially when they're little, obviously over time we're gonna go less and less. He's gonna start going once a week and then eventually he'll go once every now and then. But until then, put him on a schedule where he can go and play with his friends and have a good time at daycare and be excited to see you and you can be excited to see him. You can clean your house. You can do things that you can't do when puppy's there. Like for me, it's sweeping. I like to sweep and make sure I get all of the little dust and crumbs and everything up off the floor and he doesn't allow me to do any of that. When I really deep clean my house, it's great for him to not be here and to be in a place where I know he's safe and having a good time. Yes, I can utilize my kennel, but if I wanna clean my house all day, do I leave him in the kennel all day? And let's be honest, when I clean, he immediately messes up a lot of stuff. I clean my coffee table, it's a mirror. Then he comes back with his beard and smudges it. So I can at least enjoy that a little amount of time in the daytime where he's not there and I get a chance to clean my house, put my couch cushions back. I keep them flipped up because he jumps on the couch and I don't want him jumping on the couch. So unless I'm actually physically on the couch and able to train him, I keep those bad boys flipped up. I don't want him on it. It finally allows me to see my couch with pillows on it again and throw blankets on it again. Unlike when he's here and everything's flipped up. Number six, 
So I did not realize this. I'm, I'm horrible at this just in life in general, but slow is fast. Slow is fast. If you do things too hasty when it comes to training or certain things that you want your dog to understand, if you do it too quickly, it comes back to bite you. Just do it slowly and they will get it. They will take their time, they will get it, it will be cemented in and they'll understand what you're asking of them. If you try to skip steps, it will come back to bite you. So keep that in mind. Number seven, some of the things that you do to protect your dog and to help your dog don't always work out the way you expected. For instance, I had a very strict no stairs, no jumping rule for Apollo up until he was 16 weeks. Growth plates aren't closed on a large breed puppy. It's really dangerous. It can cause them issues in the future. Vets, doctors, anybody who knows anything about large breed joints will tell you, you save yourself a world of trouble later if you don't allow them to destroy their joints now. So I carried Apollo up and down stairs. I picked him up to put him in and out of the car. He literally wasn't putting any pressure on his joints. Now Apollo is 20 weeks old. It's a whole month later and he still doesn't do stairs. Why didn't anybody tell me that? I just knew he was gonna be ready. 16 weeks and he was gonna finally be excited to finally be able to run upstairs on his own. He has no desire, zero desire to run upstairs, to go downstairs. In fact, he's kind of scared. He's slick scared to do it. Not even like low key, low key he's scared. High key he's scared <laughs> to go up and down stairs and to jump out of the car. He'll jump in if you give him a running start, but he won't jump from point blank. He won't do that. So that has kind of come back to bite me because now he's 20 weeks old, he's a 40 pound dog and he still prefers to be carried. He refuses to get out of the car unless you carry him out. Stuff like that has proven to be a problem. I'm like, how are you gonna jump on my couch and not be able to jump in the car? Answer me that. All in all, it's been quite a journey. I want to show you some footage of some of the different experiences that Apollo and I have had. I try my best to get him out every day so he can see the world, so he can have a new experience, so that I can experience the world with him. Because number eight, pets are meant to be enjoyed. That is the biggest part for me of why I would get a pet. I want to truly enjoy my pet, truly enjoy his presence, truly enjoy all of everything because honestly, they're expensive. Especially in the first year when you're doing all these shots and stuff, dogs are expensive. Apollo always gets my money. I can't even go to the grocery store without buying him a toy or a treat or something. So I have to find some sort of enjoyment in that and that is his company. That's his company, you know what I mean? That's that's him looking at me and being happy to see me. That's his unconditional love, you know? So make sure that no matter what, even when things get tough in your new puppy experience with the accidents, with the nipping, all that stuff, make sure that you just take time to appreciate your pet, be thankful for your pet, and just truly enjoy them. Number nine, do not panic. Do not panic. Apollo has been to the vet multiple times since I've had him for his vaccinations, for his different exams, etc. But he has also been to the vet because he's had, he fell and he's crying and he won't let me put him down and he's limping and all that stuff. And then I found out he was just being dramatic. Like, take your time with it. I know you might be a new mom or a new dad to this pet. You might be real nervous. They seem really fragile. They're really young. But just, just be mindful that not everything needs to be a vet visit. Um, obviously the vet has a place, but keep that in mind. Like you still gotta get to learn your pet and get to know your pet and stuff because he definitely cost me money I didn't need to spend. Like, you know, and, and yes, it's better safe than sorry. But now that I know that he's dramatic, it helps me in the future when stuff happens to be like, he might just be being dramatic right now. And number 10, Learn the value of good old chicken and rice. Learn the value of chicken and rice, okay? Chicken and rice is awesome for dogs. It helps to settle their stomach. It's a lot less rough on their digestive system than their kibble and stuff is. If your dog is dealing with an upset tummy, with diarrhea, with vomiting, or with not wanting to eat, chicken and rice is awesome. Just do it for a couple of days. It's not balanced, so you're not supposed to just turn that into your dog's meal. But chicken and rice has saved the day for me few times already okay throw a little bit of pumpkin in there if you're feeling real extra go ahead and get some probiotics 
but a lot of times if the dog's not finding their food appetizing, chicken and rice resets everything and helps you be back on the roll. Because when I tell you, puppy diarrhea <laughs> is not a joke. This is this this means war. Anyway, I hope my tips were helpful. I hope you all learned something. I hope you enjoyed the footage. Apollo and I are gonna be going on a lot of different adventures and I wanna share all of those with you. If there's something you wanna see from me, please let me know, I'm more than happy to share. But otherwise, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't already, please check the notification bell so that you can know about future uploads from me and I'll see y'all next time, bye.